to an episode of AI for Doctors. Today, we are going to create an artificial intelligence model to classify cell phone captured images of blood smears into malaria infected or uninfected. We are going to use Google's Colab. If you do not have an account, then it's pretty easy. Just sign up for a Google account and uh, if you have a Google Drive account, you'll be able to access uh, Google Collaboratory. And I have included a link in the comments section. So you can copy and paste that link into the browser and that will take you directly to a uh, Colab uh, notebook. Now, when you paste it for the first time, it will ask you to sign in and then you'll be able to see this notebook. So with Colab Notebook, you're able to do uh, artificial intelligence programming without having a um, expensive computer or um, you know GPU or stuff like that. So make sure that you have this saved into your uh, into your drive so now now you're here you can go to edit go to the notebook settings make sure gpu selected save and uh, you can copy it to your drive so i would highly suggest that click this button copy it to your drive and then connect here so Let's do that, copy to drive. It's gonna take a few seconds and you will see a uh, new tab opening. And now let's connect. Okay, now we are connected. Make sure uh, you go to and click the files tab here so you can see all the files that's available to us. So here we are planning to create a artificial intelligence model to predict whether a blood smear is infected with malaria or not. And we are using data from NIH to get more information about the data. You can uh, click the NI go to the NIH website. If you want to understand more about the data and to compare results of different algorithms, click here. That's not really essential, but if you want to explore that, you are uh, free to do that. Now, you know, we use uh, Microsoft Excel to enter data and create graphs and Microsoft Word to create documents. So in this, we're going to use a tool called Fast AI to do the artificial intelligence programming. So first we have to import that package fast AI to our notebook and this is done using this line from fastai.vision import star. So this is going to import all the uh, libraries that are essential for image classification. And to run a cell you can either click this play button or uh, while you're in the cell press shift and enter and you can see it's working once it's done. Um, that that circle will stop. So now we have imported fast AI library. Now in this cell here we are going to download the cell images.zip folder from NIH and we are going to download it into our folder here. And we use a wget command to get that zip file. Now we're going to press the play button here and as you can see, we are downloading uh, the file and uh, it's 97 megabytes and it's saved here. To see that, you just hit refresh and there you go, you see the cell images.zip file. Now, we are going to unzip the file, the folder, using the unzip command here. You can press the play button here. Uh, this is gonna take a few seconds, or probably a minute. And at the end of this, you will see a uh, cell images folder here. Uh, you go down here. So to see all the directories or subdirectories under the current folder, you use a command called ls, and that will list all the directories under your current folder. So once the 
zip uh, program unzips all the files into our folder we want to make sure that uh, cell images folder is there for us to access so looks like it's still working that's spinning okay that's done and as you can see there is the cell images folder there now let's run this folder and as you can see we have the cell images folder now we're going to set a path variable to the folder or folder where the cell images are so if you click that folder you can see two subfolders parasitized and uninfected this parasitized folder has images of cells which are infected with malaria and of course the uninfected folder has images of uh, cells which does not have the malaria infection okay now let's run this cell now in here we are actually taking all those images and uh, transferring it to a variable called data so we are passing the path variable which is the you know location of where the images are now this line here it splits the whole data into two sets one is the training set and the other one is the validation set so here we are going to split 20% of the data and keep that as a validation set. So the artificial intelligence model will be created using the training set and then the model will try to evaluate in the using the validation set. This helps us to fine tune um, the model. And here we are using a transformation function for example, if we have a uh, microscope image, does it really matter if it's flipped uh, upside down or flipped from right to left? No, it's the same image and uh, it doesn't make, make any difference. So here we are applying those transformation uh, so that we get more cells to teach the, or more images to teach the AI. And finally, here we are also resizing all of these images into 224 times 224 uh, pixel size images, like a square image. Okay, so let's run this. We'll talk more about normalized later, but you know, uh, just put this there. Make sure that uh, that normalized is there. We can talk about it later. Now, now run that cell. Okay. Now let's see how many trainings uh, images and validation images are there let's see so there is a total of 22,047 images in the training set and the validation set has 5,511 images now let's take a look at all these images it's gonna take a few uh, seconds to load up um, okay all right, as you can see, there is the label of the image, parasitized, uninfected. And as you can see, the parasitized uh, cells has uh, malaria inclusions here, uh, again here, but the uninfected cells does not have any inclusions. Okay. Now, in the next line, we are going to create the actual um, AI model. Okay. Um, so that model we're going to call it as learn and we're going to create the model using CNN learner um, command and we are passing the data which we have collected from the, the folder here now just like we can use different cars with different horsepowers you know passenger capacity etc to get from point A to B we can use different AI architectures to train our model here we are using a model called ResNet 50. In this lesson, we are also using something called uh, transfer learning. So this ResNet 50 model is trained on millions of images and uh, it, it knows to classify a lot of images, but not malaria. But we are using that pre-trained model and then fine tuning that model um, so that it can uh, classify um, cell images uh, with uh, malaria okay so that's the pre-trained means it's been trained uh, in the past on other images so we are downloading that uh, model here when we run this uh, cell 
We are also using um, metrics as accuracy. This is the metrics that will be printed once the training starts going on, starts. And we are also using a show graph function that will uh, show a graph of uh, training and validation loss. We'll talk about more about it later. So let's run that cell now. Okay, it's downloading the model. Now in the next line, we are going to actually, um, you know, fine tune the model. We are going to do five iterations, meaning we're going to go through the whole data five times and try to learn about it at a learning rate of, uh, yeah, this is the learning rate that we're going to use. Again, um, a discussion on learning rate is beyond the scope um, of this uh, session, but uh, I'll post links uh, below to learn more about this learning rate. But for the time being, uh, this setting will work and this setting kind of works for most image classification initially. So let's run that cell. This is going to take actually a few minutes, maybe 10 to uh, 15 minutes. And uh, you know, you will see five iterations or epochs here printed out. Once it's done, you'll also see a graph of uh, training and validation lows. Uh, I'm going to break the video and come back when this is done. The training has finished. As you can see, uh, we have gone through the whole data five times and we got a pretty decent accuracy, 97.187 uh, percentage. So that's pretty good. And here we can see the graph uh, that plots the training lows and validation lows. As a rule of thumb, your model is uh, uh, good if the training lows um, is slightly um, lower than the validation lows or is kind of similar to the validation lows. But if the training lows is too much lower than the validation lows, then your model is overfitting. But of course, there are uh, arguments saying that if your accuracy is improving, uh, the model is still um, getting better. So go with that. So this graph helps us to predict that. So either way, um, just by uh, five iterations, we got an accuracy of 97.18 percentage. Uh, let's um, you know plot a confusion matrix. So these are the two lines of code that you need to uh, plot the confusion matrix. Uh, there we go. So I have already run these cells for you. Um, so. Uh, the true positives are seen here. So uh, the model predicted it as parasitized in 2000, well, 626 uh, of the images um, were correctly identified as parasitized, uh, but some of the uninfected cells were actually um, predicted as having an infection, and those are the false positives and that was 78 and here uh, the model predicted uh, 2730 images as uninfected which is correctly identified so these are the true negatives but 77 of them were falsely identified as negative or was not having uh, malaria infection but in fact they had uh, uh, malaria inside so this is the false negative. So this is the false positive. This is uh, the true positives and uh, true negatives. Now you can plug in this data into the MedCalc uh, website and you will get uh, this following statistics. It has a sensitivity of 97.1 percentage, specificity of 97.2 and a negative predictive value of 97.26 percent. That's that's pretty awesome. Uh, okay, hope you enjoy, enjoyed this uh, small uh, tutorial. Um, this is my first time doing a tutorial on this subject. Uh, you know, let me know whether uh, you learned anything from this. If you have any question, post comments below. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, creating. Um, 
AI models, I would suggest uh, going to a fast AI tutorial available online for free to anyone to access. It's a great uh, course. I would recommend that to everyone. If you want to learn more about the learning rate, you can access here, but I would strongly suggest first going to the fast AI tutorial. Anyway, thanks for listening. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, post it below. Um, thank you.